Good morning, everyone. It's nine o'clock on Friday morning. Um, I'm sorry about not posting on here yesterday. I just completely forgot. But yesterday there was nothing on the calendar. It was just like uh, maybe start the final assignment kind of thing. So today, the only thing in the calendar is to do the final assignment in analytic geometry. So um, I've just been working through marking everyone's stuff, and I think I'm pretty much caught up. So if you head to the Dropbox or the quiz, um, you'll be able to see your feedback. And um, yeah, you could read it and see what you got on it. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me a message. The marks, um, sorry, I don't have them up. But anyway, oh, I can look. Let's just click on that. The marks I've been updating, but I'm sorry if I've missed anything. It's like, you know, the odd person, banana here, whoever that is, has missed these three assignments potentially, or maybe I just haven't put the marks in the spreadsheet, but I'm going through that now and just making sure. I'm just checking to see that they're all correct. And um, somebody emailed me because their mark was incorrect. Or like, you know, if I wrote you a message in a Dropbox and said, hey, you're missing this. It's always a good idea to communicate especially in an online course so I don't see you every day and just say, hey, miss, for the um, making conclusions assignment, I handed in my table, so you need to readjust my mark, please. Um, so just, like, talk to me about your mark and if there's anything that you think is wrong. Um, and I'm, I'm going through them now, too. Okay, so hopefully you're able, you're getting caught up and you're almost done unit three. So let's head into the content. Head down to unit three, sorry, um, analytic geometry. And you've gone through all the activities. Just a reminder, I started making video answers. Um, so if, I don't know, let me know if that's helping or if it's unnecessary, but so activity eight, intersections of lines, there is a question and then you can click on this to get the answer. But also I did a video answer like of how to do the whole question. So if that helps, then I'm trying to do that. It's just it's a bit time consuming, but I'll do it for as many as I can. Okay, so the final assignment is this, and that's what we're working on today. And if you can submit it today, that's great, or just sometime over the weekend would be awesome. And then we're gonna start measurement on Monday. I am gonna open up the measurement unit today though. So this is about buying a car and, um, or sorry, it's about financing and leasing a car, and then you have to put the equations in slope-intercept form. Explain the significance of slope and y-intercept, and then graph them on the same set of axes by hand, not using Desmos or Excel. And then um, decide when to choose each option. So it's like an intersection of a line question. Then this guy is like a slope question. So it's talking about a square and a rhombus. If you don't know what a square and a rhombus is, you can look that up. Just Google it. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, you're just trying to figure out who's right and you want to pr back up your answer with calculations. I made a video explanation for these two assignments also, so if you need to look at the video explanation, then do that. And then you submit it to the Dropbox. Okay. So that's it for Unit 3. Um, when I was marking your practice assignments for Unit 3, I noticed that a lot of people making the same mistake. So when you do tables of values and you try to find first differences, you're looking at the pattern of the y values. So you're seeing like, is it going up or down by something? So from negative two to two, we've gone up four. From two to six, we've gone up four. From six to 10, we've gone up four. So the pattern of the y values are that they're increasing by four each time. So that's why it's positive four. So a lot of people are getting it wrong when they're going down. So see here the y values, now it's going from four to two. Well, now that's going down two. So you represent that by saying negative two. From two to zero, that's going down two. Zero to negative two, going down two. Um, and another way to explain it would be when you're subtracting y values, you always subtract the bottom one from the one above it. So two take away negative two is positive four. Or if you jump back to this table, two take away four is negative two. So you're always doing the bottom one minus the top one. So I saw like a bunch of people that made that mistake on, um, I think it was the plain altitude question when it starts at 30,000 feet and it's descending, a hundred. I can't remember, but like maybe 100 feet a minute or something. 
So then your first differences should be negative. So just pay attention to the that. Okay. Um. What else? Um. Just, sorry, I just like had a I forgot what else I was going to talk to you guys about. Um. The next thing is measurement. And I already explained this, but I made it in a weird program. So a lot of the activities make you click on this go to activity button. And then it's got this weird look to it because I used this, I don't know, an odd program. Hey, my formula sheet's just a PDF, so it showed up right there. So this is the formula sheet that you get for EQAO, the exact same one. And it's the only thing you can use on EQAO. So the formula sheet. This guy right here is what you get for EQAO, and it's all that you're allowed to use. No other notes at all. And for this unit, you can use that formula sheet for everything we do as well. So it starts off with perimeter and area of shapes. A lot of this will be things that you've done in grade 8. Um, so it's just like that, and then it'll go through practice questions. And then I just got to input my videos that I've made into this file, which probably won't work. We'll see how it goes. Um, activity two. Okay, yeah, so then there's practice assignments like usual, um, and then you can check your answers. And then I think for unit, or for a unit to have four here measurement, there's a quiz, a Pythagorean theorem quiz that you have to do. And a volume and surface area assignment that you hand into the Dropbox. Then we do optimization, and finally, our final assessment for measurement. And it's just actually a test, but it's one that you need to hand into the Dropbox, I think, unless I convert this to a quiz online. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, so that's the measurement unit. It's actually pretty short compared to the rest. And then the final one is Unit 5, Geometry. And I said, and I didn't do it yet, that I was going to open up the culminating tasks so that you can start working on those things. Um, so the culminating tasks are just little tasks that you have to do to prepare for the final exam. And um, I, we won't do the final exam yet until the end of June. Mm, I think that's everything. Please feel free to email me if you guys have any questions. I don't think anyone's done a virtual classroom request lately, so I, I guess I'll wait until measurement to do one. Or, or if you guys have need anything, then let me know. Okay, awesome. Good luck. Have a great weekend.